And this is Josh. Yeah. I'm Josh. I'm currently the lead developer at NC2 Media. Um, right now, we're working on mobile games. They're super casual games. They're stuff your mom might play, your dad might play, you might play. Uh, very simple concepts, very simple games. Um, all built in Unity, all fully networked, uh, multiplayer, etc., etc. So today I'm going to talk about debugging and profiling in Unity. If you guys can't hear me at all, let me know. If you also have any questions, stop, let me know. Um, I don't want to just talk for 30 minutes and then, great, we're done and go from there. So with that, let's begin. All right, so a little bit about what I'm going to talk about. What is debugging? What are the steps to debug? Debugging techniques in Unity, debugging pitfalls, and then profiler overview and usage. We'll see if we get to that one, just depending on time. You know, take it, play it by ear. All right, so what is debugging? Everybody who's ever programmed probably knows what debugging is. It's the process of locating and removing bugs, errors, and abnormalities in code. Um, if you've ever started to learn how to program, you've probably learned very quickly that you need to debug your program because you're gonna make mistakes. Um, many people think debugging is probably the worst part of programming, right? It's frustrating. It's very demoralizing. Like you think you're the smartest guy, you're doing the best thing, and um, yeah, you, you messed up. You wrote something wrong or you made some assumption that you shouldn't have. Um, maybe it took days to reach this conclusion, um, you know. It just depends. Sometimes you could write code, never have a problem. You're awesome. Other times, um, you might have bugs that happen every hour of the day. It just depends on what you're working on, what you're doing, and what your experience level is. So, um, you know, probably the worst time is when you have a bug that only happens intermittently. And, you know, am I working on something or building something on a foundation of sand? Maybe I go fix something here, something breaks somewhere else. I go rush to fix that problem, it opens up six more bugs, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully this talk will kind of help you debug, it'll help you kind of get some ideas around debugging, maybe some best, best practices for debugging. So what are the steps when you debug a program? You know, what do you guys do? Um, when you start out and someone says, hey, I found a bug in your code, what does that mean? Um, for me, it's, is it repeatable? Can you definitively say that if you click on this box or click on this button, you're not going to get the desired result that you expect? Or if you're moving a player character and he falls off the edge of a cliff, but you had a collider in place, can you repeat that? Can you show me what made that happen? Um, if you can't reproduce a bug, it's probably not much use to you, right? It's like, thanks, I might look into it if I have time, but unless you can really concretely say this is a repeatable thing, it's kind of hard to debug some, some bugs like that. Um, the next step might be form a hypothesis. Why do you think this thing is happening? Um, even if you're familiar with your code base, you might have an idea of what's going on. Maybe you have a general area of you know, where the problem is. Let's say you're getting a null reference exception, right? Well, that's gonna point right to where you need to go. You know, null reference exception for this object in this class at this line, great, awesome. Let's go there and let's take a look at it. <clears throat> what if it's not that? What if you've got to do some more research? Um, you're going to have to take a hard dive into your code and figure out, is my hypothesis correct? Is this thing behaving appropriately and why? So how do you do that? Go ahead. I was going to say, for uh, one of the stories for making it repeatable, we are had a project we were working on, the person who was doing the demo, or they're doing the demo for like executives and everybody else, about like a 45 minute, 50 minute demo, and it would always crash right at the end part of it. But you could do just the end steps and it wouldn't happen. You actually had to go through all the steps to actually to make it happen. So it was so painful because it took about 45 minutes to reproduce the bug. Just to get there, yeah. It can be, it can be really a pain. We had, we had an issue this week <clears throat> where some of my data was loading on the phone all the time. Every time I hit the phone, everything was good. You put the phone to sleep, you wake it back up, and suddenly sometimes my data is duplicated. Now there's nothing in the code that should be causing this data to be duplicated. Why is it duplicating? I don't know, I gotta go figure it out. Um, I was able to figure out what it was. It was a server error, it was not on the game steam, uh, which is a nice thing, but 
I didn't know until I actually sat down and dug through the code, put some breakpoints in place, put some uh, unit tests in place, and figured it out. So now you want to try to you know test your hypothesis. I think it's this. Let me test it. Maybe I'm wrong. I probably am wrong. So all right, we'll go to the next step. Question your assumptions, right? My hypothesis was wrong because I made some incorrect assumption. I assumed that the player couldn't fall off this cliff because of a box collider or, you know, something happening at this moment in time. Well, what if I just forgot to put a collider on that object? What if I turned off the collider on the player? It's hard to say. Maybe my assumption about what was going on was wrong. And so, you know, you have to look into those things. You have to think about those things. It's okay to be wrong, right? Um, we're all human, and we all make the wrong assumptions many, many times. Um, and it's not the computer. The computer is not out to get you. You tell the computer what to do. The computer doesn't wake up in the morning and go, man, I'm going to just mess this guy over today. Watch. It doesn't happen like You haven't used my computer. Yeah. Unless you use his computer. So. <clears throat> we did one time write software that would do something different on someone's machine. Just to <laughs> Based on this user? Yes. It's a nice trick. It's called Windows 10. <laughs> Windows 10 is exactly. Remember this day. <laughs> so, I mean, let's say you've got like this nasty bug, right? Something that you just cannot figure out. You might go through these steps for days on end. Hopefully not. Um, and if you do, maybe you want to recruit someone else to come in and take a look at it with you. Um, we've had many times in the shop where some of our guys are like, man, I cannot figure out why this is doing this thing. And just walking into the room and having them talk through the problem and talk through what they're seeing and what it might be, suddenly, you know, a, a switch flips. Oh yeah, it's this. And they figure it out. I didn't even have to say anything to them. Try this or try that. It's just talking about these things out loud and letting the developer kind of air what they're doing or what assumption they're making or what test they're running um, sometimes solves the problems. And so, you know, it's fine to be suspicious of your own code, but don't trust your past self. This used to work, therefore it can't be that. No, it absolutely can be that, and it usually is that. It's the one thing you don't check. Um, <clears throat> sometimes your bugs are just stupid, right? I meant to transform on the z-axis, and instead I transform on the x-axis. Well, what, how are you gonna figure that out? Go look at your code. Maybe you spot some simple error like that. Maybe you don't. Um, you know, it's just hard to say. What I would not do, and a lot of younger developers, a lot of inexperienced developers do this, they say, well, you know, maybe I'll just change a random line of code, and I'll recompile, and I'll press play, and it'll solve the problem. That usually doesn't work. You might get lucky like once out of every 10 times, but if you truly don't know what's going on in your code, stop, take a look at it, get some help if needed, and go from there, analyze the situation and move on. Don't just go randomly change a plus to a minus or division to a multiplication or anything like that. That's not the right way to, uh, to get started to debug your code. So now the fun part. So debugging in Unity. All right, so if you've ever used Unity, it's got a lot of different techniques to debug. You've got the debug API. You've got writing things out to the console. Uh, breakpoint debugging. So setting a breakpoint. When this breakpoint gets hit, we're going to do something, or we're going to check some value, or we're going to analyze our situation. <clears throat> Using the use of a register callback. I'll go into that in, in a little bit of detail. Debugging in Xcode. So what does that mean? So what if I have a bug that only happens on my phone? It does not happen in the editor, it's only on my phone. Well, how do you debug that? You say, well, works on my machine. It's a funny joke around the office, but it gets pretty annoying pretty quickly when a developer says, well, yeah, this works on my machine. I don't know what's wrong with your phone. Well, let's figure that out. How do we debug on the phone? So we're gonna go through that. Let's run the profiler. Why are we getting five frames per second? Why is the player falling off the cliff? I don't know. Let's run the profiler and let's find out. And then let's take a look at some third-party tools that might help you out in your development. So I'm gonna jump out to Unity real quick, or somewhat quick, and cycle through some windows real quick. I've got a lot of um, 
tabs that we're going to kind of jump around to. All right, so this is the Unity API. If you guys have ever, if you've never seen this, please do take a look. It's got a lot of good information. Um, specifically the debug API, which is what I'm going to be talking about for the next couple minutes. So you'll see in here, well, what is the debug API that Unity provides? Well, it's a debugging class, right? You've got a lot of static variables. Is the developer console visible? Do I want to pop it up every time the user presses play? Great, I can do that here. Um, is my build that I'm, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was just going to ask, so does the debug stuff only happen in like debug builds, like you build a release one? No, it will, it will happen in release as well. Um, anything that you print out to the console will show up in your, your log or your console. Um, what we do is we put a pragma around anything that is a debug statement. Then when you make a release build, all of that gets cut out. Um, so you don't have to worry about all the nonsense that comes with that. And I'll go into that a little bit more in just a second. Um, so you've got a lot of static functions here in the debug class. To call any of these functions, it's simply debug dot, then the function name, right? So debug dot assert, debug dot log, debug dot draw line, debug dot draw array. These are really important things to kind of help you get started on the path to debugging in Unity. Um, the common thing that most everyone uses when they first start Unity is debug dot log. That's simply going to write out to the console. So you're going to say debug dot log, open parenthesis, some sentence or some string or some whatever you want to say, close it, print it out to the console. You'll see a lot of people use debug.log to debug their, their games. And there's not really much wrong with that, except it can be unreliable. You might be printing out a floating point value, or maybe you're printing out a time. Well, by the time it prints that value out and the time the next frame loops around, your value's changed. Go ahead. This is a really dumb question, but when you say printing out, what, where is that going? So I'll show you in Unity. Um, so we'll pop over here. So let's see if you can see that. So this is your console in Unity. Um, it's going to print out anything that you want to see, warnings, errors, uh, debug.log, anything like that. It's going to appear in this console. If you want to um, clear this on play, you can do that. If you want to clear it right now, we just did that. If you only want to show warnings or errors, or maybe you don't want to show any warnings or any errors, you can control that in this window. Um, this is kind of the main point for most people to start debugging in Unity. So I'm going to run a real quick program, and we'll see what happens when I write out to the console. And my resolution is messed up, so bear with me just a second. Try to make this big. Come on. Made it worse. All right. I'm in iPhone mode because um, I made this for an iPhone app. So you can see down here that I wrote out to the console. I clicked on the, the icon and I wrote out to the console. And we're going to ignore all these errors because I've got this set up for, for failure for this demo. So we're actually going to hide all those. Getting face sprite for mood, mad. Right? I clicked on the mad face and I got the, the mad face sprite. I clicked on the happy face, I got the face sprite. What does that actually look like in code? Well, again, Simply debug.log, whatever you want to say, whatever your variable is, doesn't matter, right? <clears throat> the same thing, if we change this to debug.log warning, it's going to log a warning in the console. If we change it to debug.log error, it's going to log an error in the console. Now, you might say, well, why would you ever do that? Well, maybe you only want to look for errors, or maybe you only want to look for warnings. Maybe you want to pragma out so you never see any warnings. It's really up to you as the developer as to why you would want to use some of those things. I can tell you from working on projects for many, many years, you're going to have multiple developers on your team. They're all going to write to the log. They're all going to do their thing. And your log is going to be thousands of lines long. So how do you find what you're looking for in the log? Maybe you want to um, only log warnings or log errors, things like that. Maybe you want to color code your log. 
that's something a lot of people don't know that you can do in Unity. So Unity actually supports RTF in the log. So if we come in here and, I don't know, let's see, color equals cyan, I don't know, size equals 16. We're doing all this stuff. All right, so we'll see if this compiles. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Come on, Unity. And sometimes Unity is very slow, and it does not respond. So then would you have to debug your log if it didn't compile? Yes. Yeah, if you, if you can't compile, and I'll, I'll just make it not compile, and um, kind of show you what it does. There we go. So this actually did compile. It did not compile. So all compiler errors must be fixed before you can continue on. Great. What do I do? And I've turned all errors off. So I can't have a new line in a constant. I'm guessing it's complaining about this mood. it afterwards. All right, so we compiled and we'll go back to our log. Everything's all good. We'll click on this face. Now you can see that getting face sprite from mood is now blue and 16 point font. So a lot of people don't know in Unity's log that you can actually colorize and customize everything you want to see in there. That helps out tremendously um, as opposed to just having the basic 10 point gray font, right? Um, it's just a kind of a neat parlor trick, but they have the entire uh, styled text available in the log, or excuse me, in the API. You can take a look at that. Um, not much more to say there. So, <clears throat> let me just jump back over to the presentation. All right, so we've talked a little bit about the debug API. We've talked a little bit about writing to the console. Can anybody think like why it would be a bad idea to write to the console? Like let's say you have a Twitch game that relies on a lot of user input and you've been debugging to the console. Like what would a bad thing be from that? Why, why would you not want to do that? It will slow things down. It will slow things down. Believe it or not, writing to the log or to the console will slow your program down. Now it's only going to be a fraction of a millisecond. But if you do it enough, you will slow things down. I've actually seen bugs on our current system take out all the debug.logs. Uh-oh, my game doesn't work anymore. What just happened? Well, we've, we've exposed a race condition. That's a whole set of problems. How do we solve a race condition? We'll talk about that another day. But I would, I would highly recommend monitoring your use of debug.log don't just think that, all right, I'm going to write to the console a thousand times and... You said you exposed a what condition? Race condition. Race. Yeah. Okay. So what was happening in this game was, <clears throat> you know, games are often built on assumptions and expectations. You assume that certain things are going to be in place or certain things are going to be there for you before your game starts. Maybe your, your system is going to be in a certain condition or a certain state, things like that. Well, in this case, we had one game object that we were relying on for control that was not quite done with its awake before all the other game objects were done. So, oddly enough, that was exposed through a debug.log being in the system. We took it out, it exposed the race condition. It was a good thing it did. We refactored a couple things, fixed it right up. Um, other games in the system were not doing that. It was like this one specific game, the one way it was built, the developer just made an assumption that he could load the tutorials of the game while the game was still loading. You can't do that. You gotta wait for your game to load, your asset bundle contents to load, um, all of your game objects, game managers, things like that. They need to load, then you can load your tutorials. So, all right. So something that's um, pretty interesting about Mono Develop is IDE breakpoint debugging. 
So what does that mean exactly? Well, I'll show you. What that means is I go into MonoDev, if I can find it, and I set a breakpoint. What's a breakpoint? Well, that's where I stop or I break my code to evaluate a situation. Maybe I want to set a breakpoint and check some variable's value or check some conditional statement that's about to happen. How do I do that in MonoDevelop? Well, you simply click on the, to the right, or excuse me, to the left of the line. So click over here and you'll see a little red icon appears and now we've got a breakpoint set. Down here at the bottom, you can see that I've got this breakpoint set on line 24 and it's gonna break when it hits that mood. What you wanna do next is you wanna actually attach this to Unity. So if you hit play right here, it'll load at the bottom. You probably couldn't see it. Let's see. And it'll say, you know, here's all your breakpoints. I'm attached to Unity, I'm ready to go, right? Now we jump back over to Unity, we hit play. My breakpoints are set, my program's running. I click on this face. We're now in mono develop. We've hit our breakpoint, we're stopped. Execution is paused. And now we've got, you know, an entire treasure trove of information in front of us. Is this the kind of thing you'd use if uh, you're getting a bug and you want to find out where your code, which line it matches at? I mean, this is one way to do it, sure. Um, we use this a lot to check values of variables. Um, you know, you're making assumptions all the time when you're writing code and you're assuming that things are going to be in certain states. Um, set a breakpoint and actually check to see if that variable has some value before some condition happens. Um, you can use breakpoints for pretty much any type of, of situation. Um, you can even breakpoint a debug.log statement. Doesn't really make sense to do that. I don't know why you would. You're going to print it to the console anyway, but you could do it. So if we look here and we see like what's going on when I'm stopped, keep in mind my game is running, I'm paused. I'm, I'm, I've got a breakpoint set and we've hit that breakpoint. So depending on how familiar you are with, um, with programming, you have your entire call stack available to you, right? That's over here in this, this box down at the bottom. And you can see kind of how this cascaded. I clicked on this icon, Something happened, it cascaded to the system, and we got to where we are today. And you can walk the call stack. So you can see that in the update method, we hit process. Then we process mouse event, we execute. We eventually get up to our code, which is testdebug.selecthappyface. Intuitive name, I know, um, which is where we are right here. That's really, really helpful if you've got breakpoints set throughout your program and you don't know where you're at, or you don't know how you got there, That'll tell you exactly who called you and how you got to this path in your code. <clears throat> and so you might say, well, that's neat. What do I actually do with a breakpoint? What, what purpose do they serve for me? I'm gonna reset again. We're gonna have to go back to Unity. All right, so we hit a break point. <clears throat> You've got a couple of options up here at the top. You've got this button here that's continue. What does that mean? That means continue playing until you hit the next break point. Maybe you don't have a break point, great. Your app's just gonna continue running. Step over. That means step over the current line that you're on. You know, evaluate this condition, mood equals happy, and then move on to the next line of code. This one is step into. So say you've got some complex function. You know, some object is calling some function and you want to step down into that function, walk each line of code, and then come back out of it. That's what step into does. Step out of does the exact opposite. Say you're down in a function and you want to get out of it. You hit step out, you're up one level higher. So you'll see here if we hit next, it just walked one line of code. It evaluated mood and it walked forward. Down here you'll see this, which is all of your local variables, everything that's in the class. And you can deep dive down through all these things if you want to. Um, not a whole lot of stuff going on here. You can evaluate certain members. So happy face, for example, 
What happy face is, is it's a sprite that I set up that's a happy face. Well, if something was going on with it, maybe I wanted to find out what its current, I don't know, texture is. I can look at it right here in the stack trace and see what the value of it is. Again, if I want to look at the, the variable mood, I can do the same thing here. We've evaluated mood, and we see that my mood is happy. I clicked on the happy face, my mood is happy. Pretty straightforward stuff. All right, so let's just continue on. And since we clicked on the happy face, we're gonna get the happy face down here at the bottom that is messing up because of our aspect ratio. And it's not gonna work. Not gonna work either. All right, well, you have to pretend it's there. There's a kid's happy face on the screen. If we click on the sad face, it clicks, <laughs> shows a sad face. Now, what do you think happens when we have an exception in our code? What usually happens when you have an exception in your Unity code? You, sometimes you'll get a warning, you'll get a, an error to your console, maybe you'll blow up. We'll find out. So we'll click on this angry face. Well, we just had one. So system.invalid operation has been thrown and there was no face found for the mad icon. The only way I saw that is because I had a breakpoint set in Monodev and it hit my line that said, all right, <clears throat> your mood wasn't happy, your mood wasn't sad, therefore throw this exception, uh, system.invalid operation exception. You can debug this down through here by clicking on showing details and from there again you've got all your instance variables, your base classes, your base variables, static members, so on and so forth. Um, in this example you can see that we did not set a face sprite for the mad face. A real quick question, what does it mean when it says thrown? A thrown like out just doesn't work or? Um, think of it as like I've broadcasted this event. Um, I'm gonna tell the world that this, there was this exception that occurred. That's all it is. So why would you throw an exception? Well, you wanna notify someone else that this thing happened. Maybe expectedly or unexpectedly. Um, Again, that's, a, that's an entire different talk that we could go into. Um, but is, is it sort of or approximately a variation of a debug.log? Another way of alerting the... No, not really. Um, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a debate in computer science about exceptions, when to use exceptions, when to raise exceptions, things like that. Um, I'm very cautious to raise exceptions unless it's a critical situation. Like you were expecting something and that something didn't happen. Maybe you want to throw an exception and handle that somewhere else. Debug.log is typically for information. You know, I'm writing to the console because I want to know that I'm here or I hit this method or I did this thing. Exceptions typically kind of a big deal. Right, you don't throw exceptions all the time. You, you, you're very sparingly when you, you do throw your exceptions, or at least most people are. All right, so I know this is all pretty- A bit more drastic. Uh, yeah, it is absolutely a bit more drastic. Um, basically something happened very, very bad. What do, right? Um, how do we react to that? So. Let me blow through the scene real quick and just show you guys what I have set up here. So <clears throat> we have a simple canvas. The canvas has three sprites. We have a happy face, a sad face, and a mad face. We also have a human, which is just a simple game object that has an empty sprite on it. All we're doing is we're going to click on the face. We're going to show the corresponding human face. Very simple stuff. How do we do that? Well, in here we've set up some event triggers. Um, you know. Runtime only, when I select this face, call this function that sets happy or sets uh, mad or, or sad. Now if you look in here for mad, we're selecting the mad face. We're calling the same code that we're calling with happy and with sad. So you can see right here, you know, here's select happy, here's select sad, here's select mad. What we're not doing though is we're not associating the mad face with the face sprite for a mad person. Therefore, we're gonna throw an exception. We're gonna cause some kind of problem, right? So,
Another really, really cool thing that a lot of people don't take advantage of in Unity is this idea called register log callback. What does that do exactly? So <clears throat> that's actually deprecated. There's a, a newer function called log message received. All that is is a delegate or an event handler that says, when I receive a log, someone writes to the console, do something with it. Whatever the something is, that's up to you to figure out. Right? So you can see here that on enable, I'm going to say application.log message received, handle log, and then on disable, kill that, that event handler. And then here's the actual method itself. So public void handle log, string text, stack trace, log type of type, message equals text. Very, very, very simple stuff. Now you're saying, well, what does this have to do with debugging? What does this actually mean? What practicality is there in this? Well, let's go to our main camera and let's just throw this logger on the main camera and let's see what happens, right? <clears throat> so I have a public variable, it's called message. What do you think message, gonna, message is gonna do when we run our scene or we click on something? What do you think is gonna appear in message? We're probably gonna write the log to the variable called message. Now we did that in like one line of code. Technically like three, but I'm not counting. And you can see right here, this is my debug.log. This is a logging test. I'm also storing that in a variable called message over here in my inspector for free. Don't have to do anything to get that to show up over there. Now if I click on my face, remember we're gonna write to the log again, which we did getting face for this sprite. And if we go over here and we look at our message, it says getting face for sprite mood, whatever. <clears throat> so it's kind of a quick and dirty way to hijack debug.log and do with, do with it as you please. It's a built-in Unity function. Again, not many people are exposed to it. And if you want to take a look at it again, very, very simple stuff. All you're doing is registering an event using this method, handling it as you please. Very, very straightforward stuff, but pretty powerful. You can imagine all the fun you can have with that. You can print it to a file, you can route it to some database. I don't know, do whatever you want to do with it. All right, so now the, the, the fun part, or what I consider the fun part. What do you do when something happens in Unity where it works on my machine, but it doesn't work on my phone? How do you debug on the phone? That's like the million dollar question that nobody really understands, right? Well, we're gonna figure that out. So, first thing you've gotta do is, you go into Unity and you actually make your project. You actually build your project. So in this case, this is an iOS project. I'm not gonna go through the steps of building it. We can talk about that offline, um, just to save some time, because it is kind of complex. What it's gonna do is it's gonna build this project and it's, you're gonna be able to open it in Xcode. Um, again, this is iOS. Android is an entire different discussion we can have on another day. Um, we go over here to Xcode and we close Xcode. And we're going to open our project, or at least we're going to look at our current project. Um, this is everything that Unity kind of gives you for by default when you build to iOS. You've got your. Oh, sure. You guys see that? All right, cool. <clears throat> so this is your, your output of your program, your game, so to speak. All of your data, your classes, your libraries, your frameworks, everything that Unity has kind of built for you and packaged up, we're opening that in Xcode. And we're going to actually put that on my phone, and we're going to hit some breakpoints on my phone and figure out how to debug certain variables on the phone in runtime while you're playing your game. <clears throat> Hopefully. All right. <clears throat> so I just press play. What that does is it's saying, hey, here's my iPhone. I'm gonna copy everything over to it. I'm gonna do all this really cool stuff. You can see over here, Made in Unity is popping up. Hey, look, it's our faces, right? We've all, we just saw the same exact app. So we tap on our smiley face, we see a smiley face. Pretty cool stuff. You can see down here that 
we have our console right here and we're outputting a lot of stuff to the console. Getting the face sprite from this file hundreds million times, it is what it is. That's one way to debug on the phone. You're writing your log output while it's running on the phone so when I click on this face my log just updated and I can see the, the change in the variable. The only problem with that is <clears throat> it's not very reliable and um, it's not very good. Like You can't do anything with it. You can say, well yeah, I expected that variable to be 4, it's showing as 5. I can go back to my code and I can figure out why that is. A better way to handle that is to mess around with Xcode's debugging features. So, let me delete this. Does this work the same way if you're using a PC rather than a Mac? No, this is going to be Mac only. Um, you're not going to be able to run Xcode on a PC. Um, so, for those that don't know, you can build your Unity projects for IL2CPP. That takes Unity's code, works some black magic on it, and compiles it down to C++ code. Um, I'm glossing over a lot of stuff in that, that explanation, but again, another talk for another day. We actually want to set a breakpoint in Xcode for, remember that exception that we had, like we clicked on the wrong face and it threw an exception? We want to actually see that exception in Xcode when it happens. So what do we do? We go to the debug view, which is this little tab right here, this little um, arrow looking thing. Right click on it and adding, excuse me, I'm wrong, debug, create exception breakpoint. <clears throat> now this is going to say what kind of exception do I want to listen out for? I being Xcode, what do I want to listen out for? Objective C, uh, C++, or just all? Well we're just going to do all. We're going to keep it pretty easy. All right, so our breakpoint set. What do you think is going to happen when we hit the, the angry face? Well, look at that. We just had an exception in Xcode. So now the fun really does start. This is where it gets really, really interesting in Xcode and really kind of hairy. But you're going to get to the bottom of your debugging problem. You're going to be able to say, no matter what, on my phone, here's exactly the, the call trace or the stack trace that's happening. and how do I solve this problem? So if you look over here, you've got all the IL2CPP stuff that just happened when we threw that exception, right? We raised the exception and it happened in our get face sprite method. So remember we, we just looked at that in the C sharp code, we saw where it threw the new exception and now we're saying, well, we just threw this managed exception on the device, what do we do? How did we get there? Well. We got there by walking this stack trace over here on the left. Um, you can see that this happened in the update method and it actually happened in the get face sprite method in our C-sharp code. Um, if you look down in this kind of description over here, you'll see like test debug, underscore get face sprite, underscore m, and then some random number. Um, <clears throat> all that is is the type name or in this case the class, which is test debug. Um, the method name, which in this case is get face sprite. M, which means method, and some random number. Might be five, might be five million. Doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> that's gonna tell you exactly where to look in your C-sharp code, eh, give or take. You know? you know to look in this class and this method. You're not gonna have a line number, but you're going to be pretty close. You're going to be able to say, well, I think it's crashing in this area. Um, we could spend, you know, we could spend all night long going through debugging in Xcode. One really quick thing I want to go over is the LLDB library in Xcode. So Xcode has this really nice debugger that's built in, and we'll go to their homepage. So it's called the LLDB debugger. Um, it's a debugger built into Xcode. Now, what does that actually do for us? Well, it lets us debug Objective-C, C++, um, you know, anything that we can run on an iOS device can be debugged in Xcode in runtime 
as it happens. The problem with it is, it is not friendly. And we'll go through some of that right now. So we want to run some command. And we start out by going over to our console, which is over here on the, the right. And down at our, our prompt, I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll try to raise this up some. Let's see if I can. Come on. All right, can you guys see this right here? All right. So we start out a new command with P, and then we say IL2, and you'll see that it kind of starts auto-generating our code for us, or at least suggesting whatever we want to do. So we want to do IL2 CPP, we want to go to the utils class, and we want to go to string utils. And again, this is, um, this is an entire level of, of Objective-C slash Xcode debugging that is pretty nasty when you get down to it. Um, Unity admits this is not very friendly. Um, they would love to improve on this, but it's kind, of an, it's kind of an iOS thing slash a super advanced user thing. So what I've typed here so far, <clears throat> IL2 CPP, utils, string utils, UDF 16 to UDF 8, a pointer to the IL2 CPP class, and we're saying this. So all my local variables, everything that is in the scope of this class, well, you can see right here, I've got mood, I've got mad face, I've got sad face, I've got happy face. Those are very familiar to us. We just saw them in, in Objective, or excuse me, in C Sharp. Now we're seeing them compiled down to C++ right here available for us. So we're actually gonna query the mood2 property. We're gonna say, what's the value of mood2 in IL2CPP? And we wanna get the chars. So that, and we'll see what happens. An error was found, because I don't know how to type. And this is where it gets tricky. Um, Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't work. So you basically have to sit here and like futz with it enough that your syntax becomes correct. If I can't get this to resolve, we'll move on. Let's see. Might be missing. It will give you the memory address, yes. Yeah. So, again, depending on your your kind of familiarity with programming and, and you know how deep down this rabbit hole you want to go, you can see over here in my um, my local variables that I have this variable called mood. And you can dig down through this and get the memory address, as, as Jason just said. And, um, you know, how far down this hole do you want to go, right? We can spend all night going through, you know, this string at this address, or this mono behavior at this address, or this happy face at this address, so on and so forth. <clears throat> the point being, the larger point here is, Apple has provided this entire debugging framework for you in Xcode that, again, you can run, you can write some pretty cryptic code, and then see the actual real-time output on your device and hopefully help you debug um, in Xcode. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. All right. I'm going to skip the profiler because I'm running kind of long on time. Um, I'm going to touch very briefly on some third-party tools. So there's a lot of different third-party tools when you guys are building games, right? Um, Bug Snag, Raygun, Crashlytics. There's all kind of stuff out there for you to use. I'm going to show you Bug, Bug Snag, maybe. If we go to my mail. All right. <clears throat> so this is my Bug Snag project. Um, what this is is every single error that has occurred in my system at any given time. So on the phone, when the apps run and the app crashes, 
a, a, an exception report gets generated and it gets thrown over to this tool. So we'll just click on this very first one, which is a null reference exception in main. Um, maybe that's a bad one. I'll find something a little bit easier to look through. So you can see here that this exception has happened one time. Uh, last instance was today. It happened, I'd say, 19 minutes into program execution. Uh, there's 115 megs of memory free. You know, it happened on production. This is my app build. It happened on the iPhone. It happened on this OS version, this Apple device, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> if we look through here, you can see index out of range exception. Well, we just talked about exceptions earlier, what they are, or at least why they might be thrown. In this case, somebody's array index was out of range. And that happened when they were using a dictionary. So you can see, you know, here's my game, here's my hint. Um, I tried to get a hint on this word, and index out of range. This at least is an online tool that a lot of people could go to and they could take a look at and collaborate around if you've got 50, 60 developers working on the same project. It's going to track how many times did this thing occur, um, what were the instances, what devices, Android, iOS, standalone, etc., etc. Plus you've got all this version tracking and, and control. You can assign exceptions to people. You can, um, you can kind of have fun with it if you want to. So that's, that was bug snack. Yeah. Um, bug snag is not free. I think for indie developers, I want to say it's like five bucks a month. Um, I think for us, it's maybe 15 a month, but don't quote me on that because we have uh, 20 something people on it. So it is very cheap for what you get. So, all right, so wrapping this thing up. <clears throat> One more slide. So we've kind of talked a lot about debugging about debugging in Unity. So what are some pitfalls of debugging? Well, again, like we talked, the over-reliance on debug.log. Debug.log is your friend until it's not your friend. My log says this. Well, that's not the value of that variable that you're expecting or that your assumption is. So you just need to be careful that you're not relying on debug.log too much. I'm not saying don't use it. Believe me, we use it all day long but just be cautious and careful and aware that what's in the log might not be representative of what's actually on the device or happening in run at real time. Be really careful on iOS when using debug.assert. If you have debug.assert on iOS and your assertion fails, your app will crash. It will stop responding and you will be, you'll be in trouble. Um, if you're going to have debug.assert in your code base, make sure you wrap it in some kind of pragma. So maybe you say, only in development mode, in the Unity editor, do I want to use debug.assert. I don't want production code to have debug.assert go live. You would never want debug.assert to evaluate when your user has your game in their hands. That's, that's one of the worst times for that to happen. <clears throat> Another pitfall, assuming something's wrong with your code. How many people have ever written code and you're like, I know this code is right. I am the man or woman. Right. I am always right. Okay. Maybe you are. Maybe you are right. Maybe Unity has decided, I don't want to update anymore. You need to close me and you need to restart me. That happens all the time to us. I mean, probably on a daily basis, we restart Unity anywhere from four to 10 times. Um, for a varying number of reasons. Maybe a thread is out in space and it won't unlo un unlock. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I tabbed over to Safari or, or Chrome and now Unity doesn't want to play, play right. Um, it can be a bad thing to assume that there is something wrong with your code. Obviously you want to spot check it. Obviously you want to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Maybe get some other eyes on it. But sometimes it's not your code. It's the program you're using. It's Unity's fault, Unreal, whoever. It can be a problem with your IDE. Last thing I want to touch on real quick is uh, Unity's system log. So 
what happens when you have an infinite loop in Unity, right? Like we've all written programs and we have a while loop that just never breaks. Or we have a for loop that goes to like a billion and crashes our machine. Well, how do you debug that? Like my IDE is literally crashing when I press play. What do I do? Well, you go to the log. Um, press a different button. Press a different button. That is also an option. Um, Unity stores their log on Mac in um, the library folder. So if you go here and you look under logs and you look under Unity, you'll see editor log. So my editor log was updated at 640 today. We'll take a look at it. And you can see all the fun stuff in here that happened. So you'll see fmod initialize, you'll see all this stuff for thousands of lines of code. But maybe, just maybe, when you get to the end of this, you know, you'll see, oh man, there's my exception. That exception hit, or some print statement hit, something like that. Here's my first chance to kind of see what's going on when my IDE is unresponsive or Unity just crashes. Go look at the log. Um, there's the editor log, there's the mono develop log, there's the player log, and then there is the web player log. Um, most of the time, the editor log is gonna be your most important log. Um, your player log is like if you've made a build and you see the output of that build. In here you can see that my player log actually crashed the last time I made a build and um, it looks like it crashed when I was trying to load some asset bundle assets. I won't go into details of that. But again, for the purpose of the talk, if you want to look at debugging something, start with the logs in Unity if you can't run Unity. You know, if you've crashed or you just don't know where to go, go open up the logs and, and see what happens. So I know I flew through a lot of things. We certainly can talk about more of that um, offline or or after the talk. Does anybody have any questions right now? So let's say you can build to the front end. And kind of like how you were saying before, it runs fine and you play it on your machine, but then on the front end there are some problems. Where would you start looking for that? Would you start in Xcode? Would you go back to Unity? So another function of Unity, let me open up my big project and I'll actually show you just real quick, take five minutes. Um, another way to kind of profile what's going on. Um, let's not save this. So this is the one step that I kind of glossed over or skipped over. It's using Unity's built-in profiler. So let's get rid of my console. All right, so here's my main scene. I'm going to switch over to one of our super happy fun games. All right, let's see what happens when we load this guy up. Missing prefab, not good. There we go. Come on, there we go. All right, so we're running. Here's a simple pachinko game we're working on. Pretty cool stuff, launch the ball. It goes around, rotates, does its thing, whatever. Right. <clears throat> well, what do I do if I actually want to profile this thing while it's running. You come over here to window and you drop open the profiler. And when you do that, hold on, because you're about to get a, a load of information. Um, you're gonna see up here your CPU usage, your memory rendering, your whatever you wanna see, you can set up inside here. And I'm gonna go super fast on this, because again, time. But to answer your question, I would probably drop a copy of the profiler open. I would come over here to overview and I would um, take a look at what's eating up the most memory. You know, right now my camera is a decent amount of overhead. You can see that the draw calls are about 1%. Um, culling is maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Physics, because again, we have all those little balls have physics on them. So maybe your physics are messed up. Um, in here, you can see in behavior update that these are all my mono behaviors that are running, right? So maybe you've got a mono behavior that's just got some crazy memory usage, or maybe it's got like 90% CPU that's being tied up. 
that might be a good place to start. Um, I would probably start at least with the profiler just to get an idea if you have any rogue script. But if not, <clears throat> again, debug.log is your friend on the phone. It will print to the console. Or if you want to set breakpoints in Xcode, you definitely can do that. Um, you know, we can talk about that offline if you want. But you've got an entire slew of things that you can do in Xcode as far as listening for certain variables to change or querying certain variables, setting breakpoints when exceptions happen, uh, walking through code, things like that. So that's probably where, where I would start. You know, odds are you're going to know. You know, if we go back to our game and we see that, um, you know, one of these flippers is unresponsive, or maybe it's just bouncing wrong, we know it's probably some code on that flipper or in, in that area. Maybe go take a look at it in Unity, kind of head down that path first, and then go from there. So, any um, anyone else? Any other questions? Good. Excellent. Well, thank you, Josh. Yeah. Nice.